the gentleman, or if you say it really slowly, becomes the gentle man. Although I don't think there's anything really gentle about this show. It's uh, created by Guy Ritchie, and it's from his movie of the same name, The Gentleman, or The Gentle Man. Uh, <laughs> it stars Theo James, um, Kyle Scala Sky Scalario, Sky Sky, the girl from the Maze Runner, and uh, as well as uh, Jolie Richardson, uh, Giancarlo Esco Esposito, Ray Winstone, and yes, his <laughs> guy's favorite buddy in the entire world, Vinnie Jones, pops up. So, um, what's this? What's this about? It has audio description on Netflix. Uh, before we get into it, click that subscribe button because you seem like you seem like a person that uh, maybe I'd like to show videos to in a non-creepy way, in a non-legally contractually binding way. Don't make me set up an OnlyFans to get your attention. Anyway, this is much easier. Uh, the Gentleman stars... Uh, Theo James as Eddie, uh, a guy who was like a detective up at the top of the show, and he's just doing his thing, and somebody rolls up and they're like, Sir, we need you to come home. Your father, it's your father. He is near death. And Theo James is like, all right, I'm going to stop solving crimes. I got to go home. Hops in the limo, drives off. His dad is like literally inches. It's good. It's good that he sped off because his dad, when he gets there, his dad is like, "Son, I have something to." <laughs> just, it's kind of like it's like it's like he's gonna tell him something. He just <laughs> he just kind of dies. Um, we fast forward to the. The funeral really quickly get that done so we can get to the will reading so that we learn that Eddie, who's been in the show for 10 minutes, is inheriting pretty much everything. Um, you know, the estate and uh, the title of Duke. He is now a Duke. And his brother, Freddie, who's technically the older brother and by British rule, he's not very happy about it. He's a little bit of a prat. And uh, he's immediately... I deserve this. I am the firstborn. I am, it's mine. Why did you do this? Why? And you get that for like, I don't know, it seemed like forever. He's obnoxious pretty much for two episodes at least. Um, it's really hard to like Freddy as a character. And uh, <laughs> so, <sighs> get ready for that one. Um, he, uh, Basically, Eddie ends up finding out the worth. At first of all, he thinks he has no worth, that nothing's worth anything, and then he suddenly finds out what it's actually worth. And uh, it, bef while he's in the middle of uh, uh, entertaining a sale to uh, Giancarlo Esposito's character, he uh, he's like, "What? My dad used to do what? <laughs> oh, there was a weed farm. Look at that." <laughs> um. And uh, he meets with Kaya, Kaya uh, Sco, Sco, Scodelario, uh, and uh, they kind of team up to... Anyway, the shenanigans continue from there, like paying people off and settling Freddy's debts leads to more and things. And then there's a guy called The Gospel who comes into the series, and he's ridiculous, and uh, just, I don't know, like a lot of things. It's uh, it, it matches... A little bit of old school Guy Ritchie, but it has uh, it has temperament to it. Like Guy Ritchie has grown up and doesn't direct films like he used to. It's like if he tried to remake Snatch now, he wouldn't have the energy to. So this has kind of like the energy of old Guy Ritchie Snatch. <laughs> it just it has it wants to have that fire and that popping dialogue and the uh, the action and everything and just keep going. And to some extent it has that, which is why the audio description on this show is all right. But it's all right of no fault of its own. It's all right because when Guy Ritchie is in his groove, his dialogue doesn't stop. He 
used to be really good at directing dialogue that just flows. It just pops from one character to the next character to the next character to the next character to the next character. And, and you're like, when is the audio... Uh, there were some things that were audio described after they had happened because it was obvious that something had happened. And um, you get it like after the fact, which is like, I could tell like there was a scene where it sounded like somebody was being buried. For example, like you could hear the sound of a shovel and like digging and, and stuff, right? And uh, like five seconds later, finally enough people stop talking to where the guy says, explains what just happened. And yeah, that's this is kind of serious. So it's not, I don't think it's going to win audio description awards, but really when you look at the what it's actually offering you, the audio description for this is... Um, there really isn't much more it can do. Uh, it's just, this is this is how you describe the Guy Ritchie film. Um, which really makes me want to see, I don't know if, because uh, I know they're older titles, if Lock, Socket, Two Smoking Barrels, or Snatch have audio description. Because I'd love to see what those are like. Because I have a feeling they're a lot like this. Where you're just like, is there a narrator? No, that's right. It's impossible for them to get a word in edgewise. So, never mind. It's like talking head documentaries, which... You know, you bounce from one person to another, to another, to another, to another. And somebody was hired to do that audio description. They're like, I don't know where I'm supposed to put things in here. Because they don't shut up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's nonstop dialogue. But it's entertaining. Uh, Theo James has grown up a lot. Uh, he was somebody that I thought was just a pretty face in the beginning. He had Channing Tatum syndrome, where it was like, "Oh, you're you're nice, you're pretty to look at." <laughs> just, I don't think there's any depth there, but he's really worked hard, like Channing Tatum has, to round out his characters and have depth to them. And they're both stronger actors now. I don't know if they're both like Oscar worthy yet, but you know, Theo, I think did just get a um, Ruby nomination for White Lotus. Channing got close with Foxcatcher, so uh, maybe down the line they'll get it. So anyway, uh, this is uh, this is fine. I watched the first two episodes. Um, I've been doing pilot reviews. Uh, I just happened to be able to watch just because of timing, and I didn't. I don't put out forty-seven videos a day uh, of everything that I did. If I did. My God, like some days you guys would be like, did you watch, did you not watch anything? Did you, what, what happened? Like what, how did you watch this much shit in one day? I try to space it out. So sometimes I don't immediately release something right after I've seen it. Just to not bombard you with too much content. Um, in this case, yeah, the, the gentleman is, is worth your time. I thought it's a pretty good show. I'm definitely in for the ride. I like the fact that Guy Ritchie's directing, um, and, uh, seems to be a cool show. Plus, it's got some great cast members down the line, like, even though they're not in the show as leads, Giancarlo Esposito and Ray Winstone, like, fire, fire actors, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're great. Uh, Jolie Richardson, I haven't seen her in enough things, so, um, it's nice to see the supporting cast be as strong as it is. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, I'm going to give the first two episodes of The Gentleman an A-. minus. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I have a website, MacMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on x or Instagram at MacMovieGuy. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acv.org. It'll let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to theadna.org. That's the adna.org. It'll let you know who's narrating your favorite film television series. That's it for me today. I will watch something else and see you guys on the other side.